Yeah. Hello, and welcome back to Let's Plates Nostalgia, the cooking show where we hope to bring a little nostalgia to your kitchen. My name is Liz. I am the client care manager at Synergy Home Care and also a home baker and chef. Today, my very special guest is Sarah. She is a very special one because she is my first guest that suffers from memory trouble. Dementia and Alzheimer's is something that affects a lot of people all over the world and it's a subject that's near and dear to our hearts. So today we are going to be making the potato chip cookie, which you know I can usually find kind of a history of all of the things that we make, but I searched the internet and I could not find where these cookies came from. But what I could find is that they really started to become popular in the 1970s. Have you ever heard of a potato chip cookie? No. I know, I hadn't either. I like the idea of it because it's a very like sweet and salty combination. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Sarah has been baking for years and years, yes, right? Yes. So she's going to be a pro at this. Uh, Sarah, I am going to have you put uh, one cup of white sugar in here for me, if you will. And it looks like, yep, it looks like it's this one. Fantastic. You start off the bat with a lot of sugar, which is always good in my book. Perfect, perfect. A little more? Yeah, maybe a little bit more. You want that to be even with the top of the cup if possible. We're gonna go, we're gonna give them our pro tips today, Sarah, okay? Perfect. We're, I'm just gonna dump that right on in this bowl. And then do you want to pour me a cup of brown sugar as well? I'll get that out of your way. So just nothing but sugar so far. I know that one's less easy to pour, isn't it? You rip that however you need. There you go. And today we are actually doing this at Amber Glen, which is a building that is like a mile from the Synergy office. So we love being here and working with them. We're gonna make a mess in their kitchen, but I think they'll be okay with it because they get to eat cookies at the end. <laughs> and then I actually, um, always at the beginning of baking, I always preheat the oven. So we do have an oven behind us that is preheating to 375. This recipe only needs to bake for 10 to 15 minutes, which is another really great thing about it. It's pretty darn fast. That looks perfect. Okay, we're going to dump that in there. Thank you so much. And then... Oh, looks like our oven is ready. How about that? <laughs> We're not ready for it though. I'm gonna dump a cup of butter in here. The recipe actually calls for a cup of shortening, but we don't have that today. So butter can absolutely be used as a substitute. And then Sarah, would you like to mix that up for me? So the recipe says to cream the sugar and the shortening together. This is ideally done with a blender. We're at a facility kitchen, so we don't have a blender, but you can absolutely do it this way as well. The texture may not be exactly what you want, but that much sugar, I think it'll still be delicious. Sarah, what's your favorite kind of cookie to make? Chocolate chip. Oh, that's a good one. I love chocolate too. You can actually, we're not doing it today, but you can throw ch um, chocolate in this recipe if you wanted to, chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So like all baking recipes, you have to keep the wet and dry ingredients separately or it's just gonna be a super weird texture. So over here, I'm gonna put all the dry ingredients together. For us, that's gonna be two cups of flour. Could you dump a cup of flour for me? Thank you, ma'am. And then half a teaspoon of salt, which I lost. Oops. I don't think we have salt. <laughs> I knew there's gonna still gonna be something we're missing. Oh, 
Perfect. Okay, inevitably we always forget something. We found it, we have our salt. <laughs> so we are gonna keep going. So I'm gonna do my half a teaspoon of salt. Sarah, do you wanna dump that cup of flour in this bowl? Oh, you've already got oh, it, honey. Yeah. Right there, you're good. I do the same stuff all the dang time. Perfect, could you pour another cup of flour for me? So I've got our half teaspoon of salt. Now I'm gonna do one teaspoon of baking soda. Just even that off so we know we're good. It's a half teaspoon, so I'm gonna do both. And then, let's see where we're at. Never made these before, so I gotta keep going. So we've creamed our sugar and our shortening. We've sifted our dry ingredients. Oh, we're also gonna add eggs and vanilla to this bowl. She is a precise pourer, I like that. All over the counter. <laughs> hey, the end result is good, which is what we need. Thank you. And then, would you like to crack both of those eggs in this bowl, since those are wet ingredients? And then I'm gonna put the biggest thing of vanilla I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'm gonna put some vanilla shells. You can just stick it on the counter. While we're making a mess, might as well keep at it. Mm-mm-mm, all right. We're gonna mix that up. She's already on it. And we're over halfway done. It's really not a bad, bad recipe. Perfect, perfect. And then these. So really, you could use whatever nut you wanted to. Walnuts and pecans are usually my two favorite nuts to, to cook with. Perfect. And then let's do a whole cup of these babies, these walnuts. And then we're gonna add our walnuts, chips, and oatmeal. And do two cups of oatmeal. Kind of a lot of big quantities of ingredients in here, lots and lots of cups. What do you prefer? Do you prefer walnuts or pecans? Either one's fine with me. I know. I don't think I have a big preference either. You could also just leave them out too if you don't if you don't like those. I know some people really like nuts and brownies. I usually don't like them that way. Perfect. I'm gonna throw that in there. We're gonna do two cups of oatmeal. We're just rocking and rolling with this thing. All right. Okay, it's my favorite part. I'm gonna smash this bag of chips. <laughs> Normally, how I smash things is to put it in a Ziploc bag and just the quantity I need. We don't have a Ziploc bag, so I'm just gonna have fun and smash this whole thing, because why not? And collectively, we need, let's see, two cups of crushed potato chips. And I pop the bag, otherwise it would explode while I'm doing this. We're just gonna, this is super fun. Good way to get out some aggression. All right, see how we're doing. Looking pretty good. What I was actually also finding online on this recipe is this is a good recipe to use all of the broken chips at the bag, at the bottom of your bag. You're not wasting anything. All right. Perfect. Where did our, here we go. So I'm just gonna do two cups of this. One. Two. Perfect, perfect. We'll just eat the rest of those. And then I am going to mix my dry ingredients so they're evenly distributed. Look at me, I'm making a mess too. All right. Now we're just gonna dump that whole thing in there. 
Okay, let's make sure we haven't forgotten anything. So we've done our nuts, chips, and oatmeal. Perfect. Do you want to mix this all together for me? Sure. And then I'm going to get our baking sheet over here. It's looking pretty funky so far, isn't it? Never seen potato chips in a cookie recipe. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm going to cheat. You shouldn't do this, but I see some butter stuck to the bottom of this quite a bit, so I'm going to make sure that gets in there. There we go. That'll help a little bit with stirring that. Oh, gosh. And then once she's done, we are going to throw them on this cookie tray, just the normal way of rolling cookies. Wow. Yeah. Man, that looks pretty tough. Do you want me to have a go with that? Sure. Yeah. This is a thick, thick mixture. You were doing great, though. You did most of the work for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. Just get all the, everything evenly distributed, always. I always just like to fold it a little bit when you've got like chunky things in there, like nuts or apparently potato chips. I think we're pretty darn good. Like I said, Sarah did most of the work for me. That's good. Okay, it sure does. You want to help me roll some cookies? Sure. Let's do it. What's your technique for rolling cookies? I always just kind of do a pinch and do this. Yeah, looks like we've got a similar technique. This is also always kind of a fun part of baking because it's very gooey and gross in your hands. <laughs> and then you always want to place your cookies a couple inches apart. So they are going to expand like crazy in that oven. And I've done this, this before, so I know from experience, if you don't place them far enough apart, they all kind of merge into one giant sheet of cookies. <laughs> got like a cookie cake. That one's a little big. There we go. I am really interested to try this. So, uh, Sarah, I was not alive in the 70s when these became popular. What do you remember from the 70s? I don't know. It's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you were probably raising kiddos back then, weren't you? Yes, probably. <laughs> I know my mom was alive during the 70s. A lot of good music from the 70s and 80s eras. <laughs> I know, I made some big ones too. The chips kind of give it uh, kind of an uneven, uneven texture, I'm noticing. I bet the oatmeal helps it kind of bind together. Okay, we are almost, yeah, that could be our last row. Just, it's just her and I, so we don't need a million of these. Although we like them. <laughs> Never too many cookies, right? We'll have to give the leftovers to everybody else at Amber Glen. Let them see what a good chef you are, Sarah. Okay. Perfect. Well, I'm going to throw these in the oven for our first batch of our potato chip cookies. Perfect. Okay, the recipe says 10 to 15 minutes, so I'm going to check it after 10 minutes and just see how we're doing. And in the meantime, we're going to get to know Sarah a little bit more. Okay, our cookies are in the oven, so let's get to know our special guest a little bit more. So, the rumor is that you were a special ed teacher. Right. That's amazing. That takes a very, very special heart. Tell me a little bit about why you chose that and what, what that was like. Well, like somehow I just decided I thought I would want to do that. And I got a degree in special ed. Mm -hmm. So that's how it worked out. That's and good. I, 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 I worked two or three places. I was in Louisville and uh, here mostly. I've been to Louisville. That's a fun city. Mm -hmm. 
there's like a whole whiskey trail and everything mm -hmm. I've done. <laughs> a lot of zip lining too there. I don't know why, but it's also fun. <laughs> so what what grade was your favorite to teach? Well, I had special ed, mm -hmm. which was like one through five. Okay. So different ages, but they were all in the same room. I bet that was hard to see children that young kind of struggling with those things. Well, we worked it out. Yeah, finding the positivity in right. it, right? Right. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I said that I think on every show, and I'm just gonna keep preaching it until everybody believes me. <laughs> no matter if your health condition, or your age, or your disability, everyone has so much to give in their own way, which I think is just a motto of life. <laughs> so you are basically an activities assistant here, really. I hear you help with all the activities. Well, I do if they, if they need help. I yeah, enjoy doing it. I love that. Yeah, tell me like what you do here, what you enjoy to do. Well, I enjoy being with friends. <clears throat> yeah. And I love being outside. And um, I, I like to have my little room. I have a TV so I can watch it at night. I'm very comfortable here. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's home. It is mm -hmm. home for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that's fun. I think being a special ed teacher and then moving to doing activities here, that, that makes sense. And you're still really working. Good for you. Thank you. you look like a young lady. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this has happened to me twice now. She walks in like, this can't be my guest. This isn't a senior. <laughs> I'm a senior. Aw. And you have, you have children, right? Three children. Three children. Mm -hmm. Wow. So worked full time and raised three kids. Mm -hmm. That's no joke. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's I wonderful. Usually stay, I usually stayed home. I took the year off when they were first born. Oh, and then nice. I went back to school. I always thought a teacher's schedule would be nice because you get those summers off. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very nice. Yeah, absolutely. My mom was a teacher, so that was always good. <laughs> well, let's check on those cookies and see how they're doing. Okay, so we just checked on our cookies. It's been 10 minutes. I always like them to be kind of a golden brown before I take them out. They're not quite there, so we're going to give them a couple more minutes. But while we were checking on them, I just learned even more cool stuff about Sarah. So your dad was a doctor, and he was in the war? Right. He's in World War II. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, he, became, he went to the VA hospital. When he came back here, he became a doctor in the VA hospital. Oh, my gosh. That's the people that were injured in the war. Wow. So, I mean, that's, a minute, that's what it was a minute bad at the beginning otherwise the veterans they seem to go there absolutely that's a really important call to help all those mm -hmm. veterans and, the, and they don't have to pay for it yeah so that's good that is absolutely amazing and then your two older siblings are much older than you nine, so my, nine and twelve years so how do we get the gift of you what did Jad say when he got back from the war i think he decided since he missed the other two so long he wanted another <laughs> Your poor mother. Yes, she, exactly. thought, <laughs> she, she thought she was all done with it. She was in the clear. She was good. Mm -hmm. And then sure enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, it well, seems like it worked out very well, though. It We're did. so glad you're here. Glad here. <laughs> and how did your dad feel about you kind of getting an education and becoming a teacher? Well, he didn't think teachers should get master's degrees. He, just, he thought teachers should just be, have a degree in case they needed to go to work. Otherwise, they were supposed to stay at home and be the homemaker that didn't work with me. No, I know that's a generational <laughs> thing, but I think that's lame. <laughs> Good for you for getting that education and, and doing what you wanted to do and you were passionate and about. And then I taught several years, and so I, have, I now get some money for my living. That's good. Yeah. Aging is not a cheap process as someone in aging, yeah. let me tell you. So <laughs> that's handy. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you were just interesting with all sorts of sorts of hidden things. She's also an excellent singer, apparently, but I'm not going to make her sing today. Okay. <laughs> and I, and I, don't, I never can remember the words. I have to have the words in front of me. Oh, my gosh. I always, I can't remember anything ever, but then I can remember like a hundred songs. I don't know why my brain works that way. <laughs> I would rather it be the other way around. <laughs> okay, well, it's been another couple minutes, so let's check and see how our cookies are doing. Ooh, those are looking better. I think they're going to be kind of a lighter color because of the potato chips. So I'm going to give it about one more minute and then we're going to bring them out. Okay, our cookies are looking pretty good, so let's get them out. I'm going to try not to burn anybody, but we'll see how it goes. Oh my gosh, yes. See that kind of golden brown color we're getting on the top of those? That is what I love to see. They're spaced out perfectly. We did. Yeah, I already did. Oh, good. We're good, we're good. And yeah, make sure to turn your oven off. 
<laughs> something we've all done at some point. Well, we did a pretty good job. Yes, they look great. Yeah, how about we taste them? Good. Moment of truth. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we're back yet again. We let the cookies sit for a couple minutes just to let them cool down and also just solidify a little bit more. So I think we're there. And they smell really, really good, so I'm kind of excited. You ready to taste, Sarah? Yes. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Very good. That is really, really good. It very much has the sweet and salty thing that I was describing. And I'm talking while I'm chewing, which is so gross. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Very good. Mm hmm. I like the nuts in it. I do think the chocolate chips would make it even better. Probably. Mm hmm. Because you do have a lot of sugar in here, so it is sweet still with the salty, but I think that would be the perfect combo. Mm. We better go give these to all the residents before I eat them all. I was going to say, the two of them need them. <laughs> I know, our, our behind-the-scenes people definitely yes. need them. Let me finish yeah. this. <laughs> they are good. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Sarah, you did an amazing job. Thank, thank you. you for being here. I enjoyed it. I hope you had some fun. I did. <laughs> good. And if you would like to submit recipes or be a guest on the show, please just email me, ElizabethSillard at SynergyHomeCare.com. We do this show monthly, so we will see you next month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's not wrong. Can you check I can also just run the I mean, I'm not sure what's going on there. You know. Oh, yeah. It's very fun. <laughs> I am here today with Cindy Carson at Jarman Center Senior Living in Tuscola with Sweetie. And Sweetie is her companion cat. How old is Sweetie now, Cindy? I think she's about I think she's about two years old, maybe. About two years old, mm -hmm. okay. And Sweetie has lived with you here at Jarman since you've moved in. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm doing some of this these interviews okay. to talk to seniors about and share with people. How, like what's it how does it help or how is it nice you know to have your pet with you living in a senior community it's very it's very nice because i know that she's talking just to me or you know interested in what i had to say and uh, of course she likes to run and play too but yeah um she just somebody to hug on to you and love a little bit <laughs> Yes, it's true. I mean, I think having um, a pet to literally pet, you know, to touch yeah. does give us a lot of personal comfort. You know, it helps us to feel good and that. Now, Sweetie likes to romp up and down the long oh. hallways here. Yeah. And um, actually, she's kind of become like a little bit of a buddy to some of the other residents, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Well. Joy, I know, has enjoyed having yeah. her and Rosalie. So, um and actually, yeah. Sweetie herself, she, at first when you moved in, mm -hmm. she was kind of shy. She was a little bit quiet, didn't yeah. really want to come out too much. And yeah. since you've moved here and lived here for a while with her, uh -huh. she's kind of come out of her shell. Yeah. And it, and it helped, too, with the other cat that was here. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, they were, they were good. They loved to get out and play with each other. They would right. race down this hallway. Mm-hmm. 
and then they'd race back to my room. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but they would were having a good time, you know. Yeah. yeah. They ne they never fought with each other or anything no. like that. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they weren't like best friends, but they wouldn't but they wouldn't fight each other either. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, Sweetie has always been a really good uh, companion cat here. You know, she's been good with the staff and with others, yeah. and um, we've been sure enjoyed having her here. We can let her go now if she wants to go. You want to Sweetie, go? you want to get down? Or you want to you... get down, or what do you want to do? Yep, there she goes. <laughs> okay, now she's going to walk off and tell the world about yeah. being here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and actually cats are kind of, they're actually easier, I think, in a lot of ways to care for, you know, for seniors sometimes than a dog might be. Yeah, you know, I think so. Because you may not, you don't have to get them outside, um, and <clears throat> they don't bark. <laughs> no, they don't bark. <laughs> uh, and they can give a lot of, you know, companionship, uh, mm -hmm. not only for yourself, but then some of the other residents. Yeah. So, um, well, thank you very much, Cindy. Is there anything you'd else like to say to people to share with them on, you know, being someone who lives in a retirement community like Jarman Center Senior Living and just having a pet? Well, um, I enjoy living, living right here. I got my own space and, um, and I have a room for my, for my cat too. And, uh, and uh, especially since I'm in the last one on this side, but yeah. um, but in it, um, I think my cat likes it. She seems to. I mean, you know, she yeah, she's rubbing on your leg yeah. right now. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm off camera. It's much better now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, um, I like I like living here, and and um, I like meeting all the all the people that. Uh, that do come to, to, you know, spend a night or two or, or, you know, spend the rest of, you know, for a long time, you know, and I, I really enjoy all those people. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. Well, you also are a good ambassador. You like to greet people and talk to people. So yeah, thank you. I do. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. This is Dr. Sally Foote and Cindy Carson from Jarman Center Senior Living in Tuscola. Hi guys, my name is Ashley Dennis. I'm the Outreach and Wellness Coordinator for the Urbana Park District. And thanks for joining me for Move It Monday. Um, today we're gonna do a 15 minute low impact um, strength and balance workout. Um, so all you will need is a set of your dumbbells or whatever weight you're using. I've got spaghetti sauce again today, um, which is approximately two to three pounds. Um, and then you need a chair, okay, and then you want to make sure that your chair, um, once you're sitting on the edge nice and tall, that the, the line between your hips and your knees is nice and flat. So I've also utilized my Harry Potter books again as a sort of bolster to put under. So then I've got a nice straight line. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and start with the warm up. So for the warm up, we are going to be standing, but you will not need weights. All right. So for our standing warm up, we're just going to start with a nice, easy marching in place. So that's opposite hand, opposite knee will raise. And you can gently set those feet down one at a time. And remember throughout today's workout to keep breathing. If you want a little more intensity here, you can raise those knees a little higher. You can even add a twist to get the core engaged or you can keep it right down here. This can be a bit of a balance challenge. Just a few more seconds here. Three, two, and one. Now we're gonna move to a step touch. So one foot goes to the side and you're gonna tap with the other foot and same with the other side. Getting some lateral movement here. Okay, now we're going to involve the arms. 
Okay, so we want arms at 90 degrees beside your waist, and then we're going to raise them. Just like this. You can go a little bit slower than I am if you need to. And again, just remember to keep breathing. Try not to let those shoulders creep up. They will try to. Just a few more seconds here. Three, two, and one. And we're going to go right back to the marching in place. Nice job, guys. A few more seconds here. Getting the heart rate up. All right, we're gonna come to a stand. We want our feet right under our hips, so the same width, and then we're gonna go through our presses, okay, without weights. So we've got field goal arms at 90 degrees, and we're just gonna press straight up and bring them straight down. Remember to have a slight bend in your knees here. Anytime we're doing standing exercises, we don't want a stiff leg. And keep breathing. Awesome job, guys. Couple more here. Three two, and one. Now we're gonna do some chair stands. So you're gonna find your seat. You're gonna to come to the edge, but not to the edge where you're concerned that you will not find the chair when you try to sit back down. So you have several options here. You can cross your arms, cross your chest like this, or you can have them out to the sides. Or if your chair does have uh, sides on them, you can use that to help you up if you need to. But I'm gonna do this right here, okay? So we're just gonna to come to a stand and then sit right back down. Nice job. You might notice a little rocking motion involved. Um, just kind of something we naturally do, but that's great because that really incorporates the core. <coughs> and like I said, just go at your own pace. Let's do two more. One and two. All right, we're gonna find our seat. We're gonna extend both legs. We're gonna warm up the calves and the ankles a little bit. Okay, so we're just going to, you wanna make sure that your legs are slightly wider than hips width here and you're at the edge of your chair. And we're just gonna point our toes and then flex, warming up the calves and the ankles. Sitting nice and tall, though. Nice job, guys. Just a few more here. Three, two, and one. So for our final warm-up of the day, we're going to do some leg slides, okay? So if you want to put that bolster under your feet, if you want that straight line, or you don't have it already, I'm just a little bit short. Um, all right, so we're just gonna do some leg slides. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to literally take our hands as we're sitting nice and tall at the edge of our chair. We're gonna slide down the front of our legs just as far as you're able, and then slide up. Focus here on really keeping the core pulled in, belly button to spine, really engaging those core muscles. Nice and tall. Three, two, and one. All right, nice job. Let's do some shoulder rolls bringing them down and back. All right. Okay, so starting with the workout, we are gonna start seated, 
okay? Um, I would have your weights handy. If you want to add weights with any of these moves, you can. Um, we're just going to start with some core, and we're going to start with some side bends. So we're going to do the right side first. So the left side, you're going to have your hand just on your thigh, just resting, staying nice and tall, okay? Shoulders down and back. And we're just going to reach down for 15 reps, okay? So just slide it down, staying nice and tall. Nice job, guys. Keep breathing. We're at five. We've got ten more. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two and one. All right, let's go to the other side. So right hand comes to the top of the leg and 15 on this side. 15, 14. Remember to keep that posture nice and tall. And just slide as far as you're able. We all have different levels of flexibility. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Keep breathing, almost there. Two and one. Nice job. All right, we're going to set our weight down. We're gonna do some lean backs, okay? So it's still sitting in our chair nice and tall with our bolsters under our feet. Okay, let's do a nice shoulder roll down and back just to realign. And we're gonna cross the arms over the chest just like this. And we're gonna gently, staying nice and tall, just lean back. And then come back forward, okay? It's a great core exercise. You wanna make sure that you're not losing the integrity of that straight spine. So if your butt's sliding back or you're feeling the back of the chair at all, you want to scoot forward. Use the core to get yourself up. Take these nice and slow. And again, everybody's working at their own range of motion here. Ten down, five to go. Five. Four, three, two, and one. Nice job. If you want to take a second to shake it out. And again, let's realign ourselves, getting those shoulders into place, nice and tall, straight spine. We're going to do the same thing, only leaning forward. So crossing the arms, and we've got 15 reps again. And make sure you're breathing throughout these exercises. All right, let's lean forward, keeping that spine nice and straight. So just as far as you're able, and then come all the way back up. Ten more here. Nice job, guys. Take these nice and slow. If you ever need a water break during this, just pause the video, grab your sip of water. Six, five, four, we're almost there, you got it. Three, two, and one. Fantastic job. All right, you can take a second to shake it out. All right, let's do some leg raises next. So keeping our blocks under our feet and again, staying nice and tall on the edge of our chair. We're gonna start with the right leg, okay? So you can have your hands at your hips if you'd like with this one. 
that helps me a little bit remember my alignment. Um, we've got leg raises, so we're just going to slowly raise just like that and just as far as you're able. And we've got 15 reps on each side. And let's go. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Awesome job. Setting both legs down. You can shake the knees a little bit to relax the hips. All right, we've got to get the other side in. So 15 on the left side now. All right, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, great job, guys. If you want to take this time to grab a sip of water, we're about halfway through the workout, and the second portion, we are going to be standing, okay? All right, so for the second part of our workout, we will need our weights, and again, we're going to be standing. You will also need your chair still, though, at the end. Um, so we're going to start with some bicep curls. So go ahead and pick up whatever weights you're using, whether it be soup cans or water bottles or spaghetti sauce. Okay? All right, so we've got 15 reps, and we just want to make sure we're tucking those elbows in, staying nice and tall, slight bend in the knees here. You want to not lock up those legs, okay? Um, so we've got shoulders down and back. We've got 15 reps, and that's one and down. Let's take these nice and slow. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, great job, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, and 15. All right, our second exercise, we've got our overhead press, which we practiced in the warm-up. So we've got right angles with our field goal arms, okay? We've got 15, pressing straight up, and keep these movements nice and slow, okay? All right, let's go. One, two, three, four, Everybody's range of motion is different here. If you've got shoulder problems on one side, you can just do one side, that's fine. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, we got those shoulders burning now. Okay, so now that we're done with shoulders, let's do some rows, okay? So if you look at me from the side, I've got, again, a slight bend in the knees, as always, and then a slight hinge forward at the hips. You don't have to hinge that much, it's just very slight, but all we're going to do is those arms are going to kind of straight down, okay? And we're going to pull back, keeping the elbows in nice and tight. And ideally, you want those elbows to come a little bit behind the back, to work the back of the arms, but we've got 15 reps, okay? Nice and slow. One, two, three, four. Keep that belly button pulled in the spine this whole time. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 
and 15. Nice job. All right, so let's go ahead and set down our weights. And if you want a little more intensity, you can always repeat this workout multiple times, um, especially the arm portion, whatever you're ready for, okay? We're just going through one round today, though. Okay, so for the second portion, you need your chair, and you're just going to use it mostly for balance. So I'll show you. You're going to come behind your chair, just like this, okay? And we're going to start with side leg lifts, okay? So just to show you again from the front, right here, and you've got that slight bend in the knees, okay? can wiggle it out a little bit to get ready. And again, the chair is a lot for balance here. Um, this can be very challenging. Okay, so we've got 15 reps on each side. Side. We're gonna start with the left side. We're just gonna lift straight up, come straight down. Try to stay nice and straight with your body, nice and tall. Okay, and try to keep the side of the foot to the outside. You don't want the toe turning up. That's gonna be the tendency, but just keep it there as much as you can. All right, so we've got 15 reps. Nice and slow. And whatever your range of motion is here, everybody's different. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Great job, guys. Thirteen. 14, 15. All right, let's get to our right side. You can bend the knees a little bit here to wiggle it out. All right, left foot planted, right foot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nice and tall, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Great job. Again, you can bend the knees here a little bit, shake it out. All right, next we've got back leg raises, okay? So I'm gonna show you from this direction. You want to stand here, again, slight bend in the knees, and our back leg raises are just going to go straight back, okay? I'm really targeting the glutes and the hamstrings here, but if you need to bend that knee, feel free, just like this. All right, we're going to start with the left side, 15 reps. Let's do it. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Awesome job. Shake it out. Bend the knees a little bit. All right, this is our last exercise. Right side, reverse leg lifts. All right, 15. One, two, three. Make sure you're keeping that slight bend in the stationary leg. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Nice job. Shake it out. Great job today, guys. Thanks for joining me for Move It Monday. And check back with the Urbana Park District on Facebook for the next workout, which will be Workout Wednesday, this Wednesday. Um, and I hope everybody's hanging in there during quarantine. And we miss all of you so much. Um, and thank you. Thank you for tuning into CUI's TV. We hope you enjoyed the show. This video can be accessed anytime on youtube.com. In the YouTube search bar, type in UPTV6 and look for their microphone logo. 
We hope you will join us again next week for more local, engaging content designed specifically for Champaign County older adults. Take care and stay safe.